Welcome, everybody. I, uh, I'm very eager to uh, play with you this morning about uh, the carrying forward idea and about, um, about language and about the, the special qualities of language and crossing the language of focusing with the language of spirituality. There's a lot of, of stuff here, including a very um, riveting for me poem that I wanna share with you. So we'll see if I can keep keep it all in in line so that it will open up and, and flow naturally and, and not be cramped because there's too much that I have to play with you with. So let's see how we do. <clears throat> let's take a breath and just get ready to greet the week with each other. Greet the day <clears throat> and greet the topic, the, the great carrying forward. I'm wondering if when you read that topic, <clears throat> you, you thought, you felt it, thought it differently to say the big carrying forward or the great carrying forward and just carrying forward that we're used to talking about. Did it feel different to you to think of it that way? I'm curious if anybody had a feeling like, well, is that different to talk about the great carrying forward or the big carrying forward? Did you have any thought about it? It certainly feels different. It does. Certainly. Yeah. And it almost like expands your perspective in a way of it it allows me to sense into something larger. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it feels true in a way. It feels like, yeah, that that does need to be talked about. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. That did just what I wanted it to do. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> language is not a thing. You know, you don't, uh, a, a word doesn't, um, it, it doesn't have a thing in it. <laughs> a word, as Jean teaches us, points to something, points to an experience. And we get into amazing trouble throughout history thinking that words are <laughs> and we fight battles over words and we take over words and we, um, we um, forbid words and all kinds of things. So when, when we as focusers want to think about the, the, the amazing um, job that language does, carrying us forward, making reality, making, uh, making the way that we can think. There was a quote I was trying to remember it this morning and maybe about how um, man lives in the house of language. Do you know that quote? Something about how we live from meaning and, and meaning we find in the house of language. We'll 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 all sort of look it up and and share it next time maybe. But the language of the great carrying forward. Does anybody have anything else to to say about how you respond to that? Glad about how we're taking it in. Yeah, I can put something in here. Um... What comes to me is uh, with the great carrying forward, there's a sense of uh, inevitability that it's going to continue carrying forward, whether I, Jonathan, have a stop process or not. <laughs> yeah. And an inevitability, <clears throat> and it's sort of unstoppable, right? Mm -hmm. As the individual has a stopped process. 
I really appreciate hearing that facet, Lynn, of um, inevitability and unstoppable. Um, that 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 feels lovely. That that wasn't where I had gone with it. Um, you had asked, "Does anybody have any thoughts?" And it's so interesting. I didn't think about it, but I did have like a felt sense of it. And, um, I liked it, I resonated with it, and I, I didn't stop to really think about it. And so when you're asking us to do that, I think for me, it was this sense of bigger than me, right? Which is also in what Jonathan just, just said in his inevitability, uh, regardless of whether my own stopped process doesn't go forward, there's the large going forward. Um, I, I guess for me, it had echoes of like the great turning, you know, like socially, culturally, uh, are we as a species going to go forward or is there going to be a big stopped process or whatever, but, but I, not to get existential about it, but I just love the sense of larger than, than, than small self. So mm. I guess that's all I'll say for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not get existential about it, Rosa? <laughs> <laughs> well, next week no so <laughs> oh i was just joking i said that's next week next week oh <laughs> yeah you know i was agonizing yesterday thinking about our our uh meeting this morning um because there's so much i i would love us to to talk about and uh we will have a follow-up at some point because we can't put it all in this one. But <clears throat> yes, let's see just for a minute. We have an individual carrying forward. And then we have another level of carrying forward that <clears throat> has an inevitability about it. And then maybe we have another, or maybe all uh, carrying forward has an inevitability about it. And then we have something that's cultural and social and communal. And then we have something that's, that's even larger, the big carrying forward that's existential, that, um, that has to do with evolution, that has to do with life that maybe has to do with more than humans, right? Let's see if we can get our minds around those levels. In one of the, the papers that I wrote, <clears throat> I, I was introducing the term, I think, to the psychoanalysts and uh, quoted Jean as saying, carrying forward is something that we all know, and that when he made up and he invented that term, everybody took to it immediately because it's something that we all know. And that when people would ask him, academics or people would ask him what that term meant, he would say, instead of trying to define it, wait, wait a few minutes, you'll know. And then as the conversation progressed, there would be an instance of carrying forward and he would say, there, there, there it is. So let's do what, what, uh, what Jean did and, and just say, where is it? What, how do we notice it? Such a vital, fundamental, concept that all of uh, all of Jean's philosophy, but all of uh, the kind of perspective of what the analysts call developmental thrust or life flow or sometimes. What was the word you used? Developmental what? Developmental thrust. Thrust. The developmental thrust would be, does that say something the same? 
to, to me, it seems like evolvement. Evolvement, lovely, evolvement. Carrying forward to me is, yeah, I know it because something new, like it's something new. Hmm. It's something new. I didn't have before. Something new you didn't have before. <clears throat> and, and yet in it, when you say that, I say, yes, something new and often surprising. There's often this, this little surprise in a moment of carrying forward. And yet <clears throat> there's, there's some continuity in it also. Yeah. Like something new and something true, almost like something that makes sense in a way that fits. Yeah, yeah. Something new and something true and something that has some continuity that we've known already. So it's not like out of the blue. That's a different thing, the out of the blue. It's like something I should have known almost like when I get that. It's like, oh, yeah, that. Right, that's right. The, <clears throat> the carrying forward process when we're thinking or writing or a poem or something has the feeling of, oh, of course. Or in a conversation, somebody says that, right? Like we've had each time in, in this already um, conversation. Oh, yes. I also feel there's a synthesis of pre-existing elements in this, some kind of synthesis that keeps the connection from current to the future or something like that. Yes, from the current to the future. For me, I'd add to that, um, uh, it's like a an experience of, the, an experience of um, uh, an action step with um, with a sense of rightness and also a sense of an energy um, flowing with the action step or carrying the action step in some kind of way, whatever. And that and there's a sense of rightness. Right. Right. Yes. 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 The sense of rightness. And the sense of action step, meaning um, that's interesting, Steve, that action step. Uh, because there's also something in the carrying, right? You're, you're <clears throat> in the carrying forward, there's something about being carried, <laughs> right? It, uh, as Jean would say, it has to come. I can't make that carrying forward uh, action step all by myself. What, what do you think of that? The, the action step of it. And <clears throat> when I think of that, I think I'm intending something or willing something. I'm doing something, opening to something, and I'm being carried forward, and it has to come. I think it's a both, both of those things when you use the word and, and sort of picking up on a, a feeling that I had about the inevitable, uh, Jonathan's uh, words about the inevitability, whether whether our um, there's a stoppage for us or not. Mm -hmm. I still think we matter, and and there's something even further with the carry, or I don't know, something more with the carrying forward. If we happen to add to it by our being carried forward or our action, sort of like the big choir. Right? I was reading that recently. Say, say a little more about the big choir. Well, uh, that 
the notion, the, the metaphor is that we're all part of a larger choir mm. and uh, the richness of the, of the movement of the choir, it relies on the singers and, you know, and uh, stoppage keeps us from singing our part or something like that. Mm. Yes. Uh, who is a, a psychoanalytic colleague of mine wrote a book about um, the the inner chorus and all of the voices that we have within us that are sorry for the noise here that are um, that are nourishing us and informing us and maybe arguing with us and all kinds of things all the time that in a chorus and <clears throat> with with your metaphor steve i think of well sometimes some of those in a chorus they're, they're a little off key or they have a cough and they start coughing in the middle or um, maybe they just stop or something like that <clears throat> And the, the inner chorus still goes on, um, but there could sort of be stoppage within it. That was my, my little image there of that. But I, <clears throat> um, I think we're, we're talking about the, the different levels of um, carrying forward the, the, the individual one where there might be a blockage and I might be trying to um, write a line to a poem or something and it, and it just won't come and it has to come. And then all of a sudden it will come and it isn't as if I have nothing to do with it. I'm receptive to it, I'm waiting for it, right? I'm intending it and my <clears throat> conscious mind can't produce it. It's not something that is uh, linear and logical. And in that way, it has to come. And actually <clears throat> focusing is this process of making a receptive space for it to come. And then it has to be ready to come. And there is, as Jonathan says, when it comes, there's <clears throat> a sense of inevitability. Like, oh, of course, it's like that. Um. Can I add something? Yeah, please. Uh, there is also the sense, as you said this, there's like almost a paradox there. Yeah, we're receptive to it, it comes, but when it comes, we also have to write it down, so to speak, in the poem. Like mm -hmm. There is this element of will, even in focusing, we set up the environment. So it's, we, like we, need to do something, it's like an inner movement, inner willingness to respond to what comes so that life keeps moving. Yes, I love that, yes. When you said, yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. And sometimes I find it's funny that I, I almost choose not to have the inner willingness, like there's something, it's just such a, like a little spot. There's a choice there almost is my sense, but that's all I wanted to say. I want to hear you. Uh, well, what, let me mark what you said, that there's an inner choice there, that <clears throat> we, we can't do it consciously, um, intentionally, willfully by ourselves, and, um, and it needs us to do it. It can't do it without us. Yeah, like we need to respond in some way, yeah. We need to respond. And the, <clears throat> the little excitement I had was thinking, well, we are interaction. That's what we're made of, right? That's what the world is made of. That's what everything is made of, 
interaction first. And there's that interaction of it coming and it has to come and we have to then respond to it, right? And interact with it. We have to write it down. We have to honor it. Maybe we have to argue with it. Mm. Maybe we have to be mad at it. And that's somehow what we are, is this uh, interaction of it and, and us, a conscious and um, explicit and implicit. Does that, what, what keeps, I'm sorry, you wanna go? Please, John. What keeps coming up for me is being touched. Um, I'm about to see a son that I haven't seen in person for a very long time. And when I talk to him, I mean, it literally feels like I'm being touched physically. I needed to add that. <laughs> that is there too, being touched. Yes, yes, yes. And this, this carrying forward for each of us individually leads to some evolution, I, it feels like, in each of us as we, as we do take these steps. And I used, to, <laughs> I used to have the sense that our country was evolving. And more lately, it's been frightening because it feels like something has stopped some of that evolution. Um, but I guess when I'm thinking about this now, if each of us is evolving in some way, and if we can be out there in any way with that, maybe we can make some little ripples in the, uh, in the country overall, but at least, at least we can do some evolving amongst ourselves. But the evolution, I think, is, um, is an important concept um, that Rosa brought up. Um, wow, thank you, Nancy. That is so exciting when you say that. <clears throat> That's the spot that I want us to be able to open up here. The, the, the spot right there where we're saying there's something inherent about life, about being human, but maybe even more than being human, about life that's an interaction of carrying forward that has an inevitability, an unstoppability. It's in its nature. It, uh, let me just get cat, catch this because I'll lose it. <laughs> that that has stoppage, that has all kinds of um, all kinds of pullbacks and holdbacks and um, tragic things and all kinds of stuff, and that it's unstoppable inherently in life some life flow and we can feel it in little moments in ourselves always and say oh yes it's like that or that's the right word and we feel it uh, we feel touched by it we are touched now, if we recognize that as part of, not, not only part, is as <clears throat> fundamental to our life being, to life itself, that's the carrying forward, then there, there, what about this next level? If this is happening in us as individuals, does it happen in our country? 
in our communities? Does it happen in um, our cultures, in our worlds? Is this a parallel experience where we carry forward even when we have stopped process and uh, even when we refuse, there's something unstoppable and that society has this and our countries have this, our culture has this, our histories, that there's some kind of evolution from our early, early be beginnings as cave people till now, that no matter what happens, there will be this life force that is always there that I'm calling the great carrying forward. What do we think of that? Is there that parallel on those levels? Do we stop believing in carrying forward when we get to the level of our country and we say, oh my God, we're going to hell in a handbasket. Um, we're hanging off the cliff and it's gonna all fall apart. Lynn, that is so beautiful. I'm just seeing that there's a number of people who have their hands raised. Oh, thank you. And I know that you don't often see that. And so I'm wondering if there's someone who is tracking that for you right now. Thank you. Thank you, Rosa. You are the one. <clears throat> I very much appreciate you doing that, Rosa. And I, and I, <clears throat> you notice that there was that moment here. Here we are at this point. And, and, and I didn't want to lose it. And nobody wanted to lose it. And so maybe several hands were up. We're all eager to speak into, into that moment. So Rosa, would you, if you would be my assistant, I appreciate it. Sure. And and part of me wants to reflect what you just said, and part of me wants knows that people have been waiting for a long time. So I'm I'm feeling a little stuck with that. Maybe I'll just say that as you're giving more words to this carrying forward and going to the level of is there a larger carrying forward? And with that, I will go to Nati. Oh, thank you so much, Rosa. I'm, my video is doing strange things. I'm sorry. I can't put my camera off because it's like <laughs> distracting everybody. So, Lynn, what you were saying just now, I had something else in mind, but what you were saying about the great carrying forward, that is so that is so deep and how this great carrying forward is so much, it's so much in parallel with with our individual and our our but it's it's like how do we name it is it individual is it is it is it general is it because we cannot there i think I, can i speak of an individual carrying forward and and when i and this is what i had in mind before about the individual level and the phrase that came to me was this phrase where gentlyn says that it, bad energy or bad feeling, something like that, is a good energy that wants to be carried forward if there is an if there in that phrase, if we pay attention to it. So I was just wondering also about those stopped processes in an individual level, how when they are like when something is, and then I go to the process model, and when something is is implying but cannot be carried forward in the in that way, there is a uh, stoppage, and so there is another occurring and another implying and another carrying forward in a different way. And and when you said this about the big process, I was wondering about our countries, for example, and when we see that things don't go the way we in 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 an evolution way and 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 I, I'm wondering about that what is it about that how is everything carrying forward and how much are we individually and and as a community and as as human beings responsible for how 
all of that is carried forward, how everything is carried forward. So there I'm, I'm, I'm just sensing into all of that. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's a next step. I, I want to let each person that was trying to speak, and then let, we'll come back to everybody's, but let's hold on to Natty's <clears throat> question about the uh, individual carrying forward. And just want to ask, is there, what would, what does individual carrying forward really mean if we feel into it? Is there anything that can be completely individual? And, and let's hold on to uh, the word responsible. Can, what does responsible mean? Are we responsible? And the question about it will carry forward, it can carry forward if we pay attention to it. And what does that mean on a communal level? if our country pays attention to blah, blah, blah. So mm. let's get some other people that, that were trying to speak when I was speaking, and then we're gonna take, we're gonna weave all these things together, which is very hard, but this is a wonderful group that can do all kinds of sophisticated thinking together without losing any of the strands, hopefully. Yes, yes, yes. I think Steph was next and then Grady. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you, Lynn. Um, the word that's coming up for me through all of this and the inevitability of moving forward and the, is the necessity for surrender. Because without, you know, for it, it's important to surrender to that process. That doesn't mean that I surrender to or one surrenders to the inevitability of an outcome, but to the process and then having faith in the goodness of the process, that there might be good on the other side, even if what I'm surrendering to isn't good in the moment, mm -hmm. but there's an inevitability of it. Yes, yes, yes. Surrender and um, faith in the goodness. And that's a big thing, right? To say carrying forward implies that something is good in our language, in our way of being, we think development, evolution is, is good. We don't think of developing in a bad direction or uh, devolving rather than evolving. Mm -hmm. And there, there's that, those two elements of surrender and faith in something. To me, it captures much of what we've been talking about there's a sense of flowing forth. A, a, a sense of, say that one more time. A sense of flowing forth. Flowing forth, yes. Yes, that's a beautiful phrase. Flowing forth. And we can feel that maybe on an individual. And of course, I'm questioning the word individual as I say it. It's important, but what does it mean? Flowing forward as a species, as an individual, as a moment, as a lifetime, as a as as a day, right? As a moment, as a conversation. This conversation is flowing forward, is a carrying forward energy. Yeah. So I want to invite everybody here to help out with the process. I see Nati's hand raised, but I don't think Lynn necessarily wants all of us to raise our hands. So I'm just trying to help here because I know that sometimes she doesn't see the hand. So um, I love what everyone is saying, and 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 I I just want to support this blowing forth of everyone here. Sorry, sorry about my hand up. It it was up from before. I just okay. put it down. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Great, great. All right. Well, I mean, are we going to flow forward better, raising our hands and Rosa helping to acknowledge? 
them or will we flow forth better <laughs> if we just speak? How about a combination? Those of you who are hand raisers will raise your hands and, and Rosa will help me see them. And those of you who um, are <clears throat> jumping in earth, jump in. Try, uh, try if you are a hand raiser, try <clears throat> jumping in for yeah. a minute and see if that flows forward in a different way than raising your hand and maybe the other way around. <clears throat> Sometimes when things become too abstract, I want to ground them in some ways. I mm. want to make them more tangible and something that I can hold on to and carry yes. it inside me when I leave this place. Yes, yes, yes. All this is very fine and dandy. <laughs> I want to I want to catch on to something. I want to hold make it tangible, make it more ground. Yes, 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 yes. There are so many ways we can do that. But I think we're we're uh, right on this on this tipping point here of faith in an evolutionary process that we're calling that gene calls carrying forward that we recognize and whether we have faith in that evolution on a communal level, on a, um, a human level, as well as an individual level. And <clears throat> I would say for myself that, that as a person and as a therapist, everything hinges on my faith in that process. Everything hinges on my faith um, as a therapist with the deep understanding that something that client insists on growing, insists on healing, that no matter how terrible that person's childhood has been, no matter how terrible the person's circumstances are, no matter how defensive the person is, no matter how, <clears throat> no matter how um, destructive the person can be, that that life force is greater than all of that. And that it, and, and here we have to come back to something very difficult. What is this it? Sashi wants us to be not to be so abstract. And here we're we're hinging everything on it. What is this it? How can Sashi take something from this conversation about all these people, these focusers, talking about everything hinges on it? What is this it? The it that <clears throat> is unstoppable that wants to grow, that evolves no matter what, that even if the leaders of our country or the people in our country or all of us are uh, sending our communities, communities to hell in a handbasket, it is stronger or something. Lynn, I would love to jump in as a participant. Would that be a Oh, sure. I didn't mean that you had to give up your... Yeah, no, no, no. I, I'm just, this is just so stirring. I'm wanting to be very sensitive here. I'm so moved by your question about what is the it, right? And then earlier you had said, everything hinges on my faith in that process. When I am working with a client, my faith that the client insists on growing and insists on healing, and that 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 faith in in the life force 
is greater than all the all the stuff all the all the yeah and I just really wanted to connect that with mm, a while ago when someone said life flow like such a simple thing right mm -hmm. and you were talking about Jean pointing to the carrying forward and wanting to point to it and say here it is like maybe I don't have a name for it but there you saw it right there right mm -hmm. just feeling a huge sense of gratefulness for the fact of Jean inviting us to pay close attention to this thing that is is happening right so you were saying it everything hinges on faith and earlier i heard nati say that jean had said if if we pay attention to it and so i'm wondering if maybe also everything hinges on attention and what a wonderful gift it is that Jean has invited us to pay attention to the life flow, right? Because, because it's happening, but we can not be participating so much. We can just be taking it for granted. We can, but something else happens when mm -hmm. we pay attention. Something else happens when we, it's almost like that doing our part. There was earlier this thing about interaction and it has to come and we need to respond, someone said, right? So, yeah, so I'm just wondering, like, everything hinges on faith, yes, and everything hinges on attention. Mm -hmm. And so that was the little bit I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you. The, <clears throat> the interaction is an interaction of attention. Uh, Steph had said it was also surrender and... Um, there was another word we had in there. Let's just see for a moment if we could gather the words. And I want to see if that helps us to ground what we're saying, because we're weaving something together. We're weaving something from a micro level of <clears throat> a sentence carrying forward to a macro level of life carrying forward and the interweaving of the micro level and the macro level. And we're weaving this with this amazing power that we have of words that can do this for us. So what words stick out for you that have carried each each word that people contribute carries it forward. Another step. What words have stuck out for you? Is that are there any words that people would want to add that we don't? Um, yeah. I, I, I'd like to speak um, to the word attention. Yes, attention. Yes, such an important one. Yeah, and. I, I'm, I would reckon most people would have heard the story about the two dogs, and it depends which you feed, which gets bigger. Yes, yes, yes. And so even before attention, there's what you choose to put your attention onto or into. Mm, yes. But then there's this big, big thing about the word choose. And we're sort of holding these off because we would need more than one helpers group for each word, but the word individual, like the understanding that nothing is ever really individual because we're, we are interaction with everything. So we're not never isolated minds that could, you know, and the word choose, do we choose? It chooses us and we choose it. I think that's where the responsibility comes in as well. Right. And this responsibility and what is that? I like to think that responsibility is the ability to respond. There's a phrase that's coming to me. Um, I'm loving you bringing up this thing of 
nothing is truly individual. And I'm, I'm reminded of this 60s phrase of the personal is political. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm very proud of my generation for making that phrase. <laughs> Thank you, all of you. Yeah. I, I'd like to add uh, to choice and responsibility. I, I always thought that something we don't talk about uh, enough in focusing is care. Mm -hmm. There is something about care that's beyond us, but mm -hmm. also, um, that, like you said, it chooses us, we choose it. Mm -hmm. like care makes everything that we do possible. Mm -hmm. And I think I read it a long time ago, Heidegger, some of you probably know more about it, talked about the care structure. I always thought it was almost like something that made even everything we talk about in focus impossible. Mm, That's yeah. the word. Some people call it love in a very wide sense. Mm -hmm. And um, and maybe there's a better word, but care is the best one I can come up with. Right, right. Yeah. I want to say that I intended to put a lot of emphasis uh, this morning on, on language and on the crossing of focusing language and spiritual language. And there's an amazing moment, I believe, in, in our zeitgeist where the language of focusing and the language of spirituality and the language of poetry and the language of politics needs to be crossed and produce, give birth to deeper and, and um, wider understandings of larger things. And uh, Jean had pointed out uh, in an interview, I think it was in the 60s, um, where uh, he said that he wished that he could bring the communities of uh, politics and spirituality and focusing in psycho psychological you know, processes that he put in with focusing together because each of these communities has its own language and it, and it is often embattled with the other communities rather than uh, crossing the values um, and, the, and the processes of these communities. And so the the we're we're doing that in a way this morning, but it needs so much more to really look at what we mean by these words and how these words can help us to think so much more than we can think when we cross languages, you know, when we when we use these words that aren't just the word that is a label for something in my political community or the label for something in my spiritual community or the label of something in my focusing community. They pop, they expand. It's like an amazing thing that can happen. We can put the word <clears throat> carrying forward together with life flow, together with being touched together with uh, what there is responsibility. Something happens there where these words give birth to something brand new that we couldn't think without crossing them. Does that feel right to you? It's a kind of a miracle. It's also like we're doing philosophy a little bit. Well, yes, because philosophy is that. Yeah. Philosophy is giving birth to no, new thinking using, um, using words that we put together and concepts in different ways. There's a big miracle magic to it, I find, when yeah. I read philosophy, I connect with. Right. Words, uh, words have a personality, a flavor. Uh, a thrust, um, they have a life of their own. I was recognizing when my mother died how certain words 
were associated with her. They were her words. And I could feel her spirit when, when, when those words would come up in conversation. One of the words was glorious. And I always thought of my mother with the word glorious or um, the word sophisticated. That was my mother's word. But every everybody has their own words, and and that would be a whole other helper's discussion of what what those words how how we how we are our words and choose our words and what our words do. Lynn, <clears throat> Lynn, I just, I just wanted to re <clears throat> read to you some of the words people are putting in the chat. There is awareness and consciousness, faith and attention, um, awareness, attention, surrender. <clears throat> Steve put responsiveness. Mm, I love that. Emerging, Jan Dean put emerging. Um, and Trevor put, <clears throat> sorry, Trevor put living alive. I've not seen those two words together before. That's really fun. Yes. And then Lenore Green put quiet presence like a haiku. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Banu put unfolding. Mm. I want to introduce uh, a new word from, uh, from, from spiritual traditions in this uh, experiment of crossing different lexicons, different languages, different communities' languages. And I wanna see what it does. Are you ready for that? I want to, us to just allow these words that have come and that have brought us on a kind of journey from the idea of the very specific carrying forward of a conversation or a poem to the large evolutionary process and can we have faith in it? And what does it mean to attend to it? All these words have helped us to, to create this thinking space together. And first let's feel into the word carrying forward, how it is in our lives, the felt sense of the moments of carrying forward and the ways in which we trust them or rely on them or surrender to them or seek them or sometimes fight with them. Sometimes are lonely for them. And in focusing, we have the experience of the focusing attitude in which we evoke them. When we're focusing or doing therapy with someone else, we're evoking them and invoking them and <clears throat> welcoming them and protecting them. These little moments, these little growth points, these little stretches. There's a stretching toward and opening in. And now I want to introduce the word, well, let me, I, I use too many words for that movement. Let's say it is a movement of curiosity. We'll use the words in our focusing attitude, curiosity and receptivity that we have. And now <clears throat> let me introduce the word calling from spiritual traditions a feeling not only of curiosity and receptivity, 
but a feeling of something in the big rate carrying forward, reaching for us, knocking on our door, asking for something from us, poking its way into our small worlds, provoking us or challenging us or tempting us or something, the felt sense of something. There was a line from a poem that I loved. There have been hands placed upon my shoulders. What has been asked of me and how has my life responded? What has my, there are <clears throat> hands placed on my shoulders. What has been asked of me? How has my life responded? And that's from a poem called uh, The Rain. I'll send it to you. But here would, I'm, I'm asking you to see what this word, and, and of course I'm defining the word as, as it lives in me, the word calling, what that brings, where we're saying that the big carrying forward, the great carrying forward is speaking to us in any moment, a tiny moment of finishing the poem or the large moment of, of our lives, of our whole lives responding somehow. When you speak of calling, I noticed when you first brought up the word, the assumption is something out there is calling me. Mm -hmm. Before you read the poem or talks further, I wanted to say, I'm actually calling it. Like I got this feeling, mm -hmm. it's not just coming from there, I'm calling. And there is this, and then I'm like, is it me or is it it? And there's this weird meeting. Yes, yes. Is it calling yes. it or is it it calling me? Yes, yes, right, right. And that's and our then, question too. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, okay. and that's our big question. Uh, what does it mean to be individual? Are we really separate? Um, <clears throat> the big question about interaction that we are, we can't be without it and it can't be without us. And we're it and it's us and what is this it that is in us and beyond us and um and in everything but maybe the i shows up there in my resistance to it because i can answer the calling or i can answer my own call or maybe for me Nowadays, it feels like I can resist for good or bad. I don't always think of it as good. Mm -hmm. But that's just a playful thought. That's maybe yeah. the meaning that I think shows up in my resistance. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's wonderful that it can be playful, that I can resist the idea that, <clears throat> that there is no such thing as a, a separate Lynn with a separate mind that can make separate decisions. I can also resist or I can also long for that and say, oh, I'm, I'm just a separate little Lynn and I need the universe to support me and not supporting me. Or, I mean, there's a lot in that uh, interaction between the I and the we, right? The I and the bigger than me, the big, bigger than I, is there is there a carrying forward? If carrying forward is uh, has all of that in it, right? If I'm carried forward, it means that there's something else inside of me that's carrying me, but it can't carry me without me. I don't know. <laughs> I love that it's playful. Lynn, I, I, I love this word calling. I just love it. And 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 you know, when 
bring in what you said about bringing words from an, from other contexts and sometimes we don't because we think oh there are separate spaces and i might be saying something that might touch onto somebody's sensibilities or something and 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 maybe it's about oh but we are we are just so much more than that and and we are all of it and this word calling brings this inner like it's uh, from outside and and it's from inside because it's this where were these but when when i hear these words it's like these butterflies that feel for the so much more the so much more that is within me but is also without me and is also out there and it's also about every every everything interacting with everything and mm. and where i i cannot put words and i need to to bring words from from every other place and every other area to to name those things yes i need to bring words from every other place every other area and see what they make right all the ingredients we need all the ingredients for this uh this great carrying forward and at the same time it connects Lynn, with this the is... higher sorry with a higher self with a with a higher self that that connects us all so that's all that's all i want to say and so much more <laughs> and now we have another word that we have to put in the chat the higher self bj you were going to say something thank you uh two things uh, most uh powerful for me out of this conversation. Uh, first, when you said a word is a label. And um, second was uh, the request for something tangible to be taken away. Mm -hmm. So uh, assuming one has faith that there's something behind any word, mm -hmm. there's something in there some great silence that really doesn't have a word. So how do we make that tangible so that uh, when we leave this sacred place, we carry something with us? So it, it almost requires a silence where we can locate that sensation in the body that mm. that word gives. Where is that sensation in the body? Exactly. So. Uh, I, I would just like to offer one tangible. I, I go to a dental school where dentists are trained. And so there's a big screen that shows the mouth. So my mouth is open and I can look up there and see the whole apparatus of my mouth almost because students are watching and learning. So I noticed my pulse and just be and watching in the back of my mouth, a little bump that was pulsing. And, and in that moment, it came to me, there is life in me that is living without my attention or awareness or focus. It's just there. There is life in me in that pulsing, red, wet, beautiful movement. And I was called by that, mm -hmm. awed by that, and by that. Mm -hmm. For me, that's the tangible that comes to mind as you're all sharing such beautiful kind of awareness. Right. And, and every word, <clears throat> every word has that tangible, that physical feeling. If we had time, I would invite you to say some of the words that are the most beautiful words to you and just feel them in your body. We do that when we teach focusing and we have somebody, we have people focus on something beautiful and something ugly. And you could feel the difference in your body with those different words. And, and words have this physicality to them. We sometimes need, we always need to really pay attention to what the words do. Words are labels, words, and we don't have time to get into this today, but we'll do another session about it. Words are flags, uh, the words of uh, pro-choice, pro 
you know, life. Uh, so many words are our flags to recognize that the word is not the the flag is not the is not the concept. It's pointing to something and it has all of its culture in it. And there's so much about that, so much about what a word, the felt meaning of a word. And the, one of the most brilliant things in focusing and, and Jean's philosophy is a very simple thing of what do you want this word to mean? And, and I, I got this simple way of saying this from Dan Schechter, I think at a, one of our, our meetings here. And it will do miracles. What do you want that word to mean? People kill each other over all kinds of words. The word God. I don't believe in God. What do you want that word to mean? What don't you believe in? Or, uh, uh, oh, I don't want to even, even get into all of the words that, that can, can make for um, wars. And, but if we just take a word as the amazing thing that it is, that is a vehicle into something. But the vehicle we're creating, as well as it's being um, presented to us, and we can say what we want that word to mean and how we feel about that word. But it's not about the whole thing. It's about what that word is saying. Anyway, I think um, I wanted to I wanted to say that, but I think we need to come back to this special spot that we are of talking about the power of the words, but the the particular power of this word um, that I'm introducing, calling, that has to do with this great carrying forward. Let's have, um, you know, I really intended to give you time for breakout rooms, but it was so rich what we were doing together. I couldn't stand to not hear what everybody was going to say. And I wanted the particular carrying forward of our conversation to be available to all of us together. Um, so I didn't give you time for a breakout room. And <clears throat> what I'm yeah. going... Yes. Could I just jump in with a quickly with a thought that's come? Do it. I was just thinking about how some some people and things don't don't make sense in in our own or their own generation. So there, you know, history is has all these examples of people who were completely dismissed and who've later become so relevant and. There's something for me about this big carrying forward, this sense of, you know, there's something much bigger happening here. It doesn't matter how much I surrender. There are certain circumstances that are completely beyond my, my power, my control. There's something much bigger happening here. Yes, 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 exactly. And I, I would like to say, <clears throat> if, if you don't mind my putting my two cents in there, that it does have to do with me and with my surrender, and it doesn't. And that's the thing that's so uh, interesting and difficult that it it needs all of us and every single one of us um, makes up this inner chorus for the, and this outer chorus, and it doesn't. Uh, it's it's all of us and. And it isn't. So um, I just want to piggyback on that. Yes, absolutely. Lynn, I just want to point out that this paradox was also here earlier when BJ said, this life, there is a life in me that is living without my awareness. 
attention or focus. And at the same time, we know that something happens when we give this life our awareness, attention, and focus, right? So these are both true. Like it's going on without me. And um, there is something powerful in the interaction there. And Lucy, I just want to say, I was very touched by your talking about how mm, some people or things are, are here almost before their time and, and then become more relevant afterward. And so that just threw this whole wrinkle into the question of time and what that is for me. So thank you so much. So that's all for now. I'm going to uh, ask Dorothy to read the poem uh, now with a little bit of time to focus on it. There was a whole other part of this that um, we'll get to a, a different time. But let's listen to this poem with my introducing the word calling into our discussion of the great carrying forward. And to listen to the poem also with the idea of connecting the macrocosm and the microcosm and the idea of um, the crossing of different languages. The poem is, is written by Rilke and written to God. And the thing that, one of the things that I love about it is the surprise of the way that Rilke uses language to bring in um, a whole different view of his experience of God, what he wants, what he wants the word God to mean. And there's something that happens in me when I hear this poem that I feel so touched. And it's a physical experience of this surprise and this tenderness that I find. Um, maybe Rilke is talking about the whole great big carrying forward being something about interaction of fragility and tenderness and life force and intention, so many things. So I want to invite you to, to hear the, the, the poem and see, may mean completely different thing for you, but I would say, uh, let's listen to it with the ears of the great carrying forward and, um, and, the, and the ears of uh, the sense of calling. Um, if I had grown up in a land where days, if I had grown up in a land where days were free from care and hours were delicate, then I would have contrived a splendid fete for you and not have held you in the times do tightly in fearful hands. There I would have been bold to squander you, you boundless presence. Like a ball, I would have flung you among all tossing joys, so one might catch you. And if you seem to fall with both hands high, would spring toward you, you thing of things. I would have let you flash forth like a sword from the most golden of all rings. I would have taken your fire and reset it in a mounting that would hold it over the whitest hand. I would have painted you not on the wall, 
but upon very heaven from verge to verge and would have shaped you in a giant, as a giant would. You as a mountain, as a blazing fire. As the simoon grown from the desert surge. Or it may be, in very truth, I found you once. My let's, friends are far away. Dorothy, let's give just a pause there because the whole scene changes now. Okay. Now, if, if, if he had grown up the way we all wish we had the perfect childhood, he would have done all these things with, with God, for God, with God. But in truth, he did find God once, even though he didn't have a childhood like that. So now we're, we're changing the scene here. And this happened once when his friends were far away. Go ahead, Dorothy. Sorry for the interruption. Absolutely. Um, my friends, <clears throat> my friends are far away. I scarcely hear their laughter anymore. And you, ah, you have fallen from the nest, a fledgling, yellow, clawed with big eyes. I grieve for you. In my broad hand, your tininess is lost. And from the well, I lift a drop upon my finger, intent if you'll stretch a thirsty throat for it. And then I hear your heart and mine beating, and both with fear. So we have a few minutes just to see what comes you with that that for Rilke this is his encounter with God not the one he imagined with a secure childhood what is this encounter I wonder um, about the other elements of the poem the friends and the bird as both metaphor and the reality of the relationships that we have with the natural world and with other humans in our environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then in my, in my mundane mind, <laughs> I think this whole Today's session has been really an active demonstration of carrying it forward. Oh, what, what that means and also universality of the spirit, you know, that eventually we are trying towards going toward that universal concept of connectedness, you know, and, and this whole big complicated tapestry you woke is like a right live demonstration of what carrying it forward means. Wow, I love that, that we've been doing that, carrying it forward together. Because I wanted you to give like a really concrete example to me. <laughs> well, in a way, Rilke did that for us. Yeah. Uh, Rilke says, <clears throat> the concrete example of the great carrying forward is that I notice a, a little bird fallen from the nest and I give it a drop of water and we're both encountering each other with stretching toward life together with that willingness to take a risk and, and take that drop of water. And in, in therapy, I, I think many of you who do therapy or do focusing partnerships, recognize that moment of like, ah, can this happen? Will the person be able to stretch for this trust in this moment in life? It's very concrete, right? Yes, Lynn, you know what came to me and what stood out the most was what he says at the beginning of the fearful hands and had it not been for that fear, 
everything else would have happened. And then he ends the poem saying, we both, we, we, we would have both been there in, in, in fear, but together. So, and, and I was thinking how many times fear is what stops us from interacting, from connecting, from, and we can connect with the fear, with these, even, yeah. even being these shaky beings. And, and, and then it's different, so, so different. Yes. So the line that stood out for me was I grieve for you because mm -hmm. it's like life is about loss mm -hmm. and he sees that in nature and it's almost like a mirror mm -hmm. yes that is a way of making peace in my I'm making up it's like making peace with it yes 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 yeah in our grief in our fear in our vulnerability, which is a, a word from a language that is very um, much in popular consciousness right now. In our grief, in our fear, in our vulnerability, and in our caring, we can meet one another. And then we meet something that is larger than ourselves. I think what I'm left with is this sense of, um, so I'm listening today and reading the poem and thinking about it is how to stay open, you know, when I encounter my fear and my grief, when I encounter um, how will I see you and how will you see me and my fear and vulnerability, like in all of this, how will I stay open to me and you? and keep that process going. Mm. And when it stops to just have more acceptance, like, okay, it's stopping now. I will open again. Mm. Mm. Yes. Somehow the faith that the stoppage is within the larger carrying forward. Many moments in our lives and many moments in history there's stoppage but that there that the stoppage is within some bigger um, unstoppable life flow Lynn I'm keeping with me that wonderful sentence you said just now so hopeful so hopeful that even with our individual and our communities stoppages and and stopped places there's something much much more powerful that is moving always moving toward a life a life forward movement yeah yeah um i loved uh natty you're bringing in the word the jeans jeans word shaky being a shaky little being, he talked about, uh, it's lucky that we don't have to be um, wise and we don't have to be strong to be therapists, that the shaky little being that we are is in the service of this life forward movement. And that's such a, a, a Rilke makes such a beautiful picture of that shaky little being that we are, that's called to pick up the fledgling falling from the nest, which the fledglings within ourselves and within our world are falling from the nest all the time, right? And we're always being called to pick them up. A wonderful experience to me to have this um, conversation with you. It's just been amazing. It's been like, um, it's been like a, an improvisational choral piece in which we're all bringing in our words and thoughts and, and um, carrying forward this word, carrying forward together. So thank you very, very much.